Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you Joan Fontaine in The Lady of the Lake on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lionel Barrymore. You know, there's one pleasant memory which I think most all of us have in common. You know what I mean if you think back to the first time you began to read a book by Sir Walter Scott. Remember the tingling excitement which went through you as you followed the magic of his words? <laughs> well, I-, I hope you'll feel the same thrill again tonight as we dramatize Sir Walter Scott's great narrative poem, The Lady of the Lake. It's a love story of the Scottish Highlands in the days when Henry VIII ruled England and his nephew was king of the restless land to the north, when clan feuded with clan and Scott with Scott. And to play the role of the Lady of the Lake, we've invited as our guest the talented and very lovely Joan Fontaine. And now here's Frank Goss from Makers of Hallmark Cards. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, let the hallmark on the back be your guide. For that hallmark tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Because You're Mine, Starring Mario Lanza, Doretta Morrow, and James Whitmore. And now here is the first act of The Lady of the Lake, starring Joan Fontaine. The hunter's horn echoed through the wooded glen and stony pass. Onward through the Scottish Highland, horse and rider plunged, and still the antlered stag led on. Past the brig of Turk, over creek and crag, past the hills of Ben Liddy and beyond. But even horse of bravest heart must tire and fall, and then the hunter went on alone. Until at last he stood upon an unfamiliar shore. Once more the hunter raised his horn. Father, is it you? Oh, Malcolm. Malcolm Graham. Even as the hunter turned to see, the maiden's boat came swiftly to the shore. The hunter bowed low and swept off the cap of Aaron's plume. Neither father nor friend, my lass, but a stranger to these shores. Sir, forgive me, but are you hurt? (laughs) In pride alone. The stag escaped me, and now I am without horse or hounds or friends. Friends? They are near? No, lass, many leagues away, faint hearts who failed me in the chase. Still you blew their horn. It was to summon them. The thought frightens you? Hmm. Aye, you tremble. No, it was for aid that I called out, for I have heard that Highland law will not let the wanderer to go unfed or to sleep upon the ground. That is Highland law, and we are subject to it. We? My father and I. And perhaps another, the name which you called out, Malcolm Graham? Which is but a name. Aye, and which brings color to your cheeks even now. But one name must lead to another, and so I hope to yours. There is another Highland law, sir, that strangers shall be strangers to each other, until bread is broken. For if there are no names, they must eat as friends and part as friends. 
May we be there always. And now take me where you will, my lady of the lake. Sir, does the food not please you? It does, and many thanks. But still, there is something you... You look about the hall. Aye, to seek an answer to this riddle. A dwelling so large, so strongly built, so far from all others. An island refuge in an unknown lake. My father planned it so. Your father? Is he Roderick Dew? No. And yet on this wall hangs Roderick's broadsword. I saw it flash in many a battle, a sword so great that none other can wield it. Lass, what have you to do with Roderick the outlaw? First, sir, I must have your name. Aye. Since I have eaten and Highland law is satisfied, James Fitzjames, Knight of Snowdon, a wanderer without castle or lady to grace it. And you? Ellen, daughter to James, Lord Douglas. So the riddle is ended. This dwelling is Roderick's, and with him your father seeks refuge. He is uncle to that Douglas who sought to do King James harm. Now the king would had sworn vengeance on all our clan. Ellen. Father. Hold not back, your lordship. I am but a wayfarer and unarmed. Then I bid you welcome, sir. The courtesy of this house. The broadsword. Roderick's blade. The sign, the sign. Why do you stand back? It is the Highland warning, my child. Roderick Dew's blade falls between us. And there must be bloodshed. Aye. And even now, Roderick comes. Farewell, sweet Ellen. Sir James! Servants! Guards! No, no, he was our guest. Ellen! Oh, hear me, father. He has done no harm. And yet he will. Roderick Dew's blade promises it. Quickly, child, what name did he give? James Fitzjames, a poor knight who lost his way. Or found it to our hiding place and goes now to King James. A spy? No, I will not believe it. Believe as you will, but speak to no one of this. Roderick comes. <laughs> great news, my Douglas, and great booty. All Glen Lassie's burnt to ashes, and the men of Loch Lomond lie as dead as the stones upon their shores. Then the raid is ended. In victory, my men fell on them while they slept, and those who escaped will carry the news to King James. Beware of Roderick Dew. <laughs> Let the coward cringe in Stirling Castle and leave the Highlands to those who are men. Roderick. Oh, I, Ellen. Even in victory, there must be losses, were they few or many? Oh, look yonder, lass, the men seem few. I cannot find Malcolm Graham. Malcolm Graham? Oh, he is new with your band, tall with golden hair and wide blue eyes. It seems you know him too well. Lord Douglas, eh, Roderick? You mistake her meaning. Malcolm is a lad who befriended me once. We owe him much. And so, Alan's question. Is well, that is all. And now, fair Ellen, what shall I tell you? That Malcolm is alive and that he is unhurt. He is, and now stands guard with my boats in the cove. Oh, thank you, Roderick. I thank you. Malcolm. Malcolm. Oh, God. Have you so soon forgotten the sound of my voice? Ellen! Oh, no, my darling. Every hour away from you, I heard it again in the call of the dove. I, and saw once more the deepness of your eyes in the blue of Loch Lomond. And now the blue of Loch Lomond is stained red with the blood of the dying. Aye, Roderick Dew waters the heather of Scotland with the blood of his enemies. <gasps> when must it end? Highland against lowland, clan against clan, chieftain against chieftain. When will there be peace in Scotland united? Ellen, this is strange talk. Oh, I thought much, my dear. In the night sometimes, my mind turns traitor to our clan. I've even wished that King James might bring us peace. Ellen! Oh, can you not see, Malcolm? Each time I bid you farewell, it may be forever. It's both love in my heart and fear. Then let me make it love alone, my darling. We waited long, too long. I'll go to your father and ask for your hand. And what dowry would I bring you? Save the curse of the Douglas, the outlawed clan. With me, you wed strife and the wrath of the king. Ellen! Ellen of Douglas! Frederick! Go, Malcolm. Aye, until later. God, have you seen aught of the Douglas, lass? 
Even now, sir, her face looks back at me from this starlit pool. Oh, Helen. Oh, would that all my sentries were so fair. My truly sentry yard to my heart. Ludwig. No, come, lass. There's no time for shyness. I've won a victory. And now I wish another. Still, it's custom to speak to a maid's father. Aye, Laird Douglas has heard me. And his answer? Is that you must answer it. Ye or nay? Sir, you make it hard. My father fed King James, and you've given him safe haven. Aye, and with a word, his haven ends. By your answer, I'll know your gratitude. No more, please. Love comes not by threat. You refuse me? Aye, for my heart is already given. And I know where. You fled the camp and victory feast. You wander the shore to be with him that I set guard. Sentry! Malcolm Graham! I first will go. Your chief to none your death. designs, a style of printing that's smart and easy to read. All of these things are important, of course, for together they express your personality just as much as the books you read or the plays and concerts you attend. Now, one sure way to find a card that's a tribute to your own good taste is to choose your Christmas card from the new Hallmark albums. You'll find that this year the collection is bigger and more beautiful than ever before. If you prefer the works of famous painters, the cards in the Hallmark Gallery Artist Series will be ideal for you. And before you decide, you'll want to browse through the modern and traditional and religious Christmas cards too, all carefully crafted in the fine manner of Hallmark cards. So why delay? By ordering your cards from the Hallmark albums tomorrow, you can have them in plenty of time for addressing at your leisure. And remember, that Hallmark on the back of every card you mail tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of The Lady of the Lake, starring Joan Fontaine. The war fires blazed on every peak, for Roderick Dew marched with bagpipes screaming. But still there was peace in one highland retreat. Helen of Douglas wandered the island and sat down with her thoughts by a wooded shore. Then at a sound she rose in fright. Who goes there? Father? Be quiet, lass. He's out of hearing. Oh, Sir James, it's James. Aye, and if there's danger, it's mine, not yours. Sir, what brings you here again? Is it to spy once more and then back to King James? You'll be glad for the news that my father is unguarded. A helpless Douglas before a vengeful king. If he be helpless, then no more than I. Helpless before a highland maid. 
For believe me, fair Ellen, I come again with no wish to spy nor intent to harm, but to give you my heart and bear you away. And I am sorry. I wait for another. You know his name. You heard me call it. I, Malcolm Graham. I feared it might be so, and yet I had to prove it. But if you're Malcolm in battle or by some misfortune... No, I'm prepared for it. Even now he stands between two enemies. King James' army and Roderick Drew's envy. If he dies, my heart dies with him. Then such a love must surely triumph. I wish you well. And Malcolm's safety. Wait. Roderick's men fill these mountains. Your escape must be through a secret path. I came that way and will find it again. But since you wish me kindness... Take this in payment. Wear this always on your finger. Whose ring is this? Once in battle, I saved the king, and in gratitude, James gave it to me. He vowed to grant whatever I asked in the name of this golden token. Keep it, Ellen, or it may be that you will have need of it. And now farewell. The king's own ring on a doubtless hand. It is in a dream. I... My only happiness is now in dreams. To sleep and dream is with me still. Ellen, my darling, the long wait has passed. Today is ours, and all time to come. Malcolm Graham. Malcolm Graham. Who calls? Your chieftain and your death. Aye, child, I'm with you. Oh. It was but a dream. And still so real. I saw him fall. Malcolm dead by Roderick's sword. A dream, you say. Or the future to be. If it be the future, then his blood is on my head, not Roderick. Oh, it's not true. And I say it is. Roderick need not kill Malcolm. The fortunes of battle may accomplish that. The battle whose cause is myself. I am the prize that King James seeks. The hunted lord of a hated clan. But if... If I surrender... No, that's the coward's way. Or is it the brave man's? One captive to Stirling Castle and the highlands free of strife. One life and ransom for a thousand. No, no! Ah, it was but a thought, my child. You dream in sleep and I awake. But come, no more fears. Back to your pillow while I stand guard. Halt! Who goes for the secret valley, friend or foe? Let him pass, Roderick. Let him pass. Answer, I say, friend or foe? A wandering knight, a friend to his friends and foe to his foes. And where are you from and where do you go? From a lake and a maiden and to Stirling Castle. Sterling Castle, then you go as a ghost. No, Roderick. Enough, enough. I enough of dreams. Waking holds less terrors. Did I moan, Father, or call out? Father? Father? You're wounded. The battle has begun. I don't fool my hope to drag me, but now it's too late. Oh, no, brave soldier. I'll, I'll bind you up and you'll still live. But, but first one word. As you came here, did you pass another? My father, Lord Douglas? I saw him, I. But he, not me. In the secret pass, he got up to a... To a... Name it, dear man, name it! It comes hard to tell you, for it's the name and place of his death. Stuttling Castle. Who knocks outside our gates? A maiden who seeks shelter from the night and wind. And your name? Your name, lass? Ellen of Douglas. 
Douglas. Captain of the guards. Captain. Hey, man, I heard. Unbar the gate. Sentries attend. The king's own captain bids you welcome Maid Douglas to Stirling Castle. <laughs> I wish no welcome, sir, but only to seek out my father and the king. Her father and the king. <laughs> the Astrobal Dungeon and the throne. <laughs> the king will see me. I promise it. And your father, too. We promise it. Guards, seize her and to the Douglas Dungeon. Hear me, sir. Hear me. The king must give me audience. See, I wear the royal ring. Aye, perhaps she speaks truly. This ring I've seen before. And well you may have, Captain. Uh, no, no, say nothing more. No answer, please. No defense. Silence to all. Sir James. Your coming is no surprise, Maid Ellen. And now command me as you will. Then this ring, your gift to me, I would present it to the king. Then follow me. And to you, Captain, the king's command, send your prisoners to the appointed place. Sir James. Aye, Ellen. Last night I dreamed. In slumber I saw you and Roderick Dew. You fought and then, and then I heard a, a death cry. It was no dream. The cry was his. Then, then the battle is ended, and the king may vent his spite on Highland losers. <laughs> Enter, fair Ellen, the presence of the king. But the throne, it is empty. Aye. And now it is filled. Your majesty. Aye, the wandering knight that you once fed and would not wed. Guards, bring forth the prisoners in their chains. My daughter, Ellen. No, not Malcolm, too. I, a captive of battle. Look upon them, lass. One a Douglas, rival to my crown, and one a rival to my heart. Your Majesty, the promise of your ring. Grant my request. One favor. One favor, I. Then choose you. Which shall go free? No. I ask for both. It cannot be. I cannot surrender all. Choose. How can I choose between one who gave me life? And one who is now my life. Still, you must. Douglas, who now swears allegiance to my name, or Malcolm, who swears allegiance to yours. Which shall live? Then, then my father. So be it. Oh, Malcolm, Malcolm, forgive me. My darling, my Ellen. Understand my choice. If my father dies, the Highlands rise again in wrath, and there is war. But now he lives. And Scotland is united. For that, my dearest, I gladly die. Oh, then be brave, Malcolm. Grieve death happily, for I meet it with you. Hold, lass, hold. You make your love of Scotland greater than the king's, and your sacrifice of this lad shames my generosity. Fair Ellen, take your Malcolm. He is free. Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm, my own. Your Majesty. I kneel in gratitude. Oh, and I, my lord. And when in some near day I'm Malcolm's bride, perhaps to the highlands again you'll come. Not as a hunter without horse, not as a gallant seeking love, but as lord of all peaceful Scotland and throughout our glens, one cry will ring. Long live our noble king. Barrymore will return in a moment. Way back in 1897, a puzzled little girl named Virginia O'Hanlon wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Sun. In it, she asked, please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? The editor's reply has become a classic. He said, in essence, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist. 
and you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Today, as we approach the Christmas season, those words again take on their full meaning. The wonderful spirit of Santa Claus returns to the hearts of each of us, and we are eager to honor our friends and loved ones wherever they may be. And this is such an easy and pleasant gesture thanks to Hallmark cards. They are the symbols of friendship, and they carry your greetings the length and breadth of the land. And here's something you might like to know. While the quality of Hallmark cards is being constantly improved, you'll find the prices remain the same. This year, as always, that hallmark on the back of every card you mail tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. You know, Joan Fontaine cut short a visit in Europe just to come back for our hallmark playhouse show tonight. <laughs> and what a beautiful performance you gave us, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Barrymore, for that pretty compliment. And, of course, I always enjoy a visit to Hallmark Playhouse. Tell me now, are you going to be able to stay with us a while, or will you be off on another traveling jaunt right away? Well, not right away. At least not until after a certain date next week. A certain day next week? Oh, that sounds to me like it could be a birthday. Well, whose is it, yours or your daughter's? As a matter of fact, it's mine. But their birthdays are pretty soon, too. They're early in November. Well, now, it sounds like your family will be getting lots of Hallmark birthday cards very soon. And I'm sure each one will make you happy. <laughs> you know, Mr. Barrymore, that's the truth. It's something I've noticed about Hallmark cards. You may get many different kinds, some sweet, some humorous, but each one seems to make you happy in its own way. It's like seeing a lot of your friends all at once. But tell me, Mr. Barrymore, what are your plans for next week on Hallmark Playhouse? Well, next week we'll present the story of some famous American naval heroes and of the man under whom they served, Commodore Preble, when we dramatize Preble's Boys by Fletcher Pratt. And to star in it, we'll have McDonald Carey. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music's composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Joan Fontaine can currently be seen in the MGM Technicolor production of Ivanhoe. The role of Malcolm Graham was played by Whitfield Connor, with Ben Wright as James Fitzjames, Ted DeCorsia as James Douglas, Hans Conried as Roderick Dew, Herb Butterfield as the captain, and Dennis Fraser as the soldier. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards present two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On radio, the Hallmark Playhouse with host Lionel Barrymore, and on television, outstanding dramatic entertainment on the Hallmark Television Theater. Consult your paper for time and station. If you find a symbol of the Liberty Bell hanging on your front door one day soon, you'll know it was put there by a good American, reminding you to be a good American. It's the Boy Scouts of America reminding all America to vote as you think and to think when you vote on Tuesday, November 4th. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present McDonald Carey in Fletcher Pratt's Pebbles Boys and the week following Daniel Webster starring Lionel Barrymore and the week after that Herman Peterson's The Covered Bridge on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs>